Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This one's a long time coming. This is part two of how to make a, an eight-inch reflector telescope. And in this part, well, let me see. In this part, we make the base, the stand for the telescope. And stick with me here if you're interested in telescopes. I got some interesting stuff to tell you. Um, in part one, and I'll pop in a little bit of video of that. I make the tube. See the red part here? Make the tube. We put in the mirror and the eyepiece and all of that, and I make this. And in the second part now, all of this is made, and this is the stand that the telescope goes on. Um, like I said, I got some interesting stuff for you. Um, you're going to want to hear this if you're interested in telescopes. But uh, let's do the intro, and then we'll launch into the whole thing. Okay? Thank you. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model box, and animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay. Welcome back. So let's take a closer look here. And I'm going to turn the camera sideways for just a few seconds, just so you can get a look at the whole telescope. And I know this is awkward. But there we go. See? Now, there's some wonderful things about this telescope that I really love. This is my own design. It's kind of like a Dobsonian mount, but it took me over a year to do this telescope and there's some reasons for that. I wanted it to be different, I wanted it to be easy to use, I wanted it to have real good functionality. And this has all of that and it's easy to make. That's a big deal. Um, and I call it the cabinet mount. And let me, let me show you why. Down here is an actual cabinet. And I'll explain the reason for that in a minute. But first, let's take a look at this. I use something called a Lazy Susan for this. So it's very easy, very smooth to move. And this is just a couple of parts I picked up at the Home Depot for this. Go that way, go this way, see? So very simply, Oh, let me turn this sideways. All right. Well, very you can very simply get look at anything in the sky in any position, and it's very comfortable to do. See the way that is? It's very easy to use. You know, it's down like this, and then you do this to get just about anything in the sky. And even when it's at zenith, it's still very easy to look in, and I love that. So I made this to my size, and you can make your telescope to your size. Um, let's take a look at some other things. Now, I, I talked about how it has been a year of me working on this and coming up with ideas. I did so many sketches and so much stuff, and I tried to understand some of the things about a telescope. And one of the things about a telescope is that even if you use it every weekend, it's going to spend 300 days a year and 20 hours on those other days in your house somewhere, right? This telescope... It's very easy because you do this. I'll show you. You put it like this, and then you can roll it around and store it somewhere in your house. Just like that. Put it in the corner of the house where it's out of the way. And, and this is another thing that I love. And these wheels have locks, so when you're using it, you lock the wheels, and it'll stay in place. Like when you take it out at night and you use it, or when you're storing it, you can lock the wheels and um, it stays safe. And here's another thing I really love about this telescope design, is that I know I have a lot of telescope stuff. Eyepieces and magazines and extra additional things. This one, the Cabinet Mount Telescope, which is the name of it, right? Has a built-in storage compartment with shelves. See, this is for taking photographs. Got my binoculars down there. I got my solar viewing stuff. And I made a little drawer for my eyepieces and my usually used stuff. See that? A little bit of foam, my eyepieces and my different things, right angle, barlow, stuff like that. And that goes right in there. So you can store all your astronomy and telescope stuff right in it. And it's out of the way. It's good to go. I love this telescope. I, I literally love this telescope. Really, I think it's a clever idea. It's really neat. It took me a long time to figure it out. I went through so many different designs. I, you know, I tried all of them. I, I wanted to do something different and I wanted to try to make some improvements. 
You know, I, all the different types I looked at, examined, I did drawings, I did some mock-ups and stuff like that until I came up with this and I, I like it for a few reasons. One is, telescope is rarely used 300 days out of the year. You gotta store it somewhere and look, you just, it's just stored like that. You know, just tuck it away and all the astronomy stuff. You can keep right in there, including your astronomy magazine, Sky and Telescope magazine. You keep it all right in there and put it in the corner and you're good to go. And you roll it away, you roll it outside when you want to use it. And it's really easy like this. This just sits in the cradle. So you can do that too. So when you take it outside, you can take this part outside, pick up the tube and take it outside. So let's do the tutorial on how to make it. And in this tutorial, in this video, I have a lot of stuff for you, right? Um, but I'm not going to give you everything, and the video would be too long. But all the dimensions and the different parts, links to the parts, Home Depot, um, some knobs, some wheels at Home Depot, you know, some, some wood, and a little bit of, a few hand tools, and you can make this too, and specifically, oh, and that Lazy Susan bearing that turns this, I'll show you more of that. Cost me, I think, eleven dollars. So you can't beat it. I think it's wonderful. I'm glad. I, I'm glad it came out so good. And it's part two, and in part one, we made this out of fiberglass with the eight-inch mirror inside. So I think that's about everything I wanted to say. But look at that! Isn't that wonderful? Just anywhere, and it just stays in place. You know, you watch. It solves a lot of problems that you know casual astronomers face. It's easy to use, very light, easy to move at night, points anywhere, it's at a comfortable height. I just love it. So, okay, so let's launch into the tutorial while this is long, but I wanted to say a lot about this telescope. Okay, let's start on the tube. Let's put those mounts on, the, on your telescope tube. You need to find the center of balance of the telescope. Put the mirror in it, put the eyepiece in it, get it to the, its full weight, and then balance it on some kind of a circular object, like a cylindrical tube like this. Even a broomstick could probably work. And mark it there when it's balanced like a seesaw. Because that's where we're going to mount these. And these are called, um, let me see, we get the exact right name here. This, these are called two by three inch general purpose drains. So drill them out like this so they have clearance holes for a 1032 screw. That's what I use, a 1032 screw. And then see the X on that telescope tube? That's the center of balance. You want these um, general purpose drains to be centered on that X. So you drill out holes in the telescope tube and mount them with screws. And take the mirror out of the telescope when you do this. You don't want any wood chips or any dust or anything to get on the tube. You don't want to, like, on the mirror, you don't want to be handling it with power tools and stuff and screwing things in. And you got to reach your arm in there anyway to put the nut on it. But here, this, this illustration shows you where to mount those. They're mounted opposite each other, of course, right? That's easy to understand. But notice how the eyepiece is at a 45 degree angle. You see, you understand what that means? Here's another picture. See? It's like at an angle, 45 degrees off. It's not perpendicular to those two because that will make it for comfortable viewing. So make sure you do that. All right, so now the telescope tube is done. That was easy, wasn't it? Let's make the cabinet. I'm using one inch by 12 inch board, which is actually like 11 and three quarters or 11 and a half, something like that. One inch by three, one inch by 12. And I'm using the higher quality pine, not the cheap stuff. And a two by two two feet by two feet piece of plywood that's uh, half inch, it's, which actually is like 15 sixteenths or 17 sixteenths, somewhere around there. That'll be for the base and the wheels. Now, you can change the height of your telescope, and you should measure this, but your telescope might be a different size than mine, or your tube might be a different length. My cabinet ends up to be 24 inches in height. So I cut four pieces of that pine to 24 inches. And then now, now let's make the cabinet. And if you're not a carpenter, I'll give you some rules of thumb here. Should always start with something like this to, um, that causes a little divot, a, 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 with a center punch, a little divot to make sure you don't, um, your drill doesn't drift. You drill exactly where you want to drill, and then you drill pilot holes. Pilot holes will make sure um, the screw goes in straight, 
and it'll make sure that there's nothing cracks, particularly because you're on the edge of the wood. And then send them, put them together, clamp them if you can, drill your pilot hole partially into the other piece of wood too. See how I went all the way through? I went through the top piece into the bottom piece with the drill. That does the same thing, prevents cracking. And then I set a bunch of screws in there. And I'm using flathead screws, which are, I believe, an inch and a half. And there you go, three pieces like this. The cabinet is coming into shape. So it's roughly 12 by 12. It's actually like 12 by 13 or something like that. And um, 24 inches tall. And then I got four pieces for shelves. And, well, technically, one is a top, one is a bottom, and two are shelves. And then I did the same thing. I screwed those in, did pilot holes, screwed them in, used flathead screws, and now we have our cabinet. Not too shabby. Anybody can do this. A saw, hammer, drill, you'll be fine. It's not that. Now the base. I um, I put that cabinet on plywood, measured around it. I put the wheels at the corners, measured around them, and then I cut that whole piece out. See? Kind of easy to figure. And then we've got a beautiful little base, just like this. Then you... You cut out clearance holes, through holes, for your wheels, and get yourself some good sturdy wheels with locks on them. You want the locks. The locks are important. And sturdy. The more you, the higher, uh, the stronger you can get, the better. And fully rotating wheels, wheels that rotate all the way around. I don't mean on the pivot of the wheel. I mean on the the mounting platform. They they rotate. And then screw them in. But these wheels are rated at like 100 pounds, which is way more than enough I need for this telescope. I think 80 pounds or 100 pounds, maybe 120. And that's just something to consider. So now the final and fourth piece that we had cut. We're going to put some hinges on the side. You can go left or right. Doesn't really matter, I guess. There is a standard for doors. I'm not sure. I forget what it is. Cabinet doors. I think there's a standard. But I'm a lefty, so I'm, this is probably backwards. <laughs> But I'm um, on a couple of hinges, one near the bottom, one near the top, and then screw on the door. Easy enough. What the hinges cost me? A dollar? But look, you have a cabinet, it's on wheels. This whole bottom piece is done. Now we'll get into the fun stuff. You're probably looking forward to this. Oh, wait a minute, one more thing. Oh, two more things. Put a nice little knob on this, and I had fun looking through the knobs at Home Depot. I love this one because it just—it's like a crystal ball, but it's also like a little universe. Just reminding me of a little solar system object. And then I put a, a hook, a latch and hook, to keep the door closed. And that's it. Now the cabinet's done. Now we get to the fun stuff. You're wondering about that lazy Susan. But look, let's take a look. This is what we got. And we need some kind of a thing. We need some kind of a yoke, a fork yoke. Like, so I made some foam board ones to get the right size. The important thing here is that it's going to be high enough so as you pivot the telescope, it doesn't rub on the cabinet. But here's the Lazy Susan. Like I said, I think it cost me $11. And the thing about this is, these are wonderful. They have ball bearings in them. And um, what happens is you screw one to the, you screw in the, either the inner or the outer ring to your base cabinet. See, that inner ring is screwed down. Imagine that inner ring screwed down, and then that outer ring screws up to the yoke. So look, I'll show you. Screw one ring down, and screw one ring up. And then the, this will rotate like, like this. It's rotating. There you go. Really very simple. Don't let this spark scare you. This, and this is the hardest part. Now, but my Lazy Susan ring um, needed a little bit of opening. The screw holes needed opening. So I just drilled them out so I could fit my screws through there. I wanted nice, durable screws. I think I used 10s. And um, so I drilled them out, make them a little bit bigger. And notice I have tape over the bearings. If you're going to drill or make any wood shavings or any metal shavings, cover those bearings with tape. You do not want metal shavings to get in those bearings. It'll ruin them over time. It'll grind them. So here's the yoke. It's just three pieces of plywood and and you're gonna put it in this way because it's weight bearing it bears the weight of the telescope which isn't a lot but still you put them this way you put them down onto that base plate you don't put them you don't you don't um, 
screw them to the sides of that base plate. You screw them down because that's how it will bear the weight. And then same thing applies. You drill pilot holes and you set screws in there and you should countersink these holes. Countersink is like a little triangular thing that what happens is the screw will sit flush below the surface of the wood. That's important because as you rotate it, if you use like button head screws that stick out, they could rub on the cabinet and, and cause it not to rotate. There's a closer look. That is a flat head screw and they sit flush with the wood. That's important. I'll show you more about that. So there you go, there's the yoke. So now this part, you buy one of these and this is a, this is called a drum trap. A one and a half by three inch drum trap. Just cut off in about an inch like this because that's the only piece you need. We don't need the rest of it, we just need this piece. Because it mates perfectly with those pieces we mounted on the telescope. And we're gonna put these we're going to cut it in half and put it in there like that. And notice how the the circular hole that I drilled in the that I cut in the wood is a little bit bigger than this. That's wonderful. I'm going to show you why you want that circular hole you cut out to be about a sixteenth of an inch bigger. But here, drill a hole in it. Drill a hole in this. Countersink it because we just like on the other piece, we want this screw to sit flat under the surface. See how deep it goes? Now when the thing rubs on it, it doesn't touch that screw. That's important, or else the thing won't work. It's a little detail, but it's important. Countersink and flathead screws. Remember that. So now, this is why we cut out that half circle hole a little bit bigger than the, than the, the PVC. See that gap? That's wonderful. We want that gap. Let me show you some more here. Put, once you get them both done, one on each side, put your telescope on it and test it. Does it swing freely yet stay where you put it? If it doesn't, no problem. This is where the gap comes in. Do this. Get yourself a little piece of wood, shim, put it in there and push it down until it tightens up. And push it down further, you can use a bigger shim, a little bit more wood, triangular piece of wood. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get a beautiful rotation on that thing that slides smooth but stays where you put it. There's the secret. It's always a little tiny thing. It's always this little tiny thing that you don't realize that makes all the difference in a project. And there you go. Shim it this one and on the other side of the telescope and you have a beautifully functioning telescope. This PVC stuff is amazing. But watch. Look. Wonderful. I think this one could use a little bit more tightening, wedge just a little bit further down into that gap, and it'll be perfect. Really easy. It's not one of those things you got to tinker with much. All right, let's finish it off by painting it. Paint the inside of the cabinet white because at night, when you're rummaging around inside that cabinet for looking for stuff, the white will help a little bit. And then paint the outside of the cabinet anything you want. You could stain it. You could even stain it to match the furniture in your house if you wanted to. Paint it to match the furniture in your house because it's going to spend somewhere in a corner 300 days out of the year, probably more. But I said, you know what, I'm going to paint it blue like a night sky. And then I'm going to have a little bit of fun adding stuff to it. This is what? Can you tell what this is? What kind of a celestial object is that? And how about this one? What kind of a celestial object is that? If you know, leave a comment. And this is an easy one. What kind of celestial object was that? <laughs> and uh, here's a good way to put it on stars. And I actually added more. I don't show it here, but you'll see it in the end. I put some planets on it, too. Three, three or four planets. Three planets, I think. And that's it. You know, this is a wonderful project. It's just about done. I wanted to say something. I have good news for you all. If you prefer. Oh, the um, drawer. Just made it out of thin pieces of wood. Some solid wood with a bottom to fit inside the cabinet. A little bit of sponge to um, hold the various things. Now, holding those eyepieces like that is nice because then they're readily accessible as you're observing. You can grab one, grab another one, you know exactly where they are and what they are, and you use them. I mean, you could make more than one drawer. You know, you have the option to make those drawers any size you want and those shelves inside the, inside the cabinet, anything you want. But that slides in there with all your stuff in it. Maybe hand warmers, hat, right? You can keep your hat in there. If it's getting cold out, you have a hat. Finger gloves, whatever you want. Snacks. And there we go. Our telescope is done. 
Yay, I love it. I got good news for you folks. If you're into the telescope stuff and you follow my stuff, I got around 30 videos. My telescope book is um, available on Amazon.com for pre-order right now. Pretty soon it will be ready for order. If you want to pre-order it, um, well, and soon, I don't even have to say pre-order. It'll just be for sale on Amazon.com. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. If 101 things, see it with a small telescope, 101 cosmic wonders, including planets, moons, comets, galaxies, nebulae, star clusters, and more. That's my book. I've been working on it for a long time and talking about it a long time. Buy it for me. You'll, you, won't, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.